like never cracked 10,000. It's like a mining town. There's fucking nobody there. <laughs> like it's um so the evidence to support this is there there are um there are a couple newspaper clippings from 1965 about an 80 minute documentary film on UFOs that was titled Phenomena 7.7 and was actually put into production by a Hollywood studio named Empire Film Studios. And from what I can see, like I Googled this and it's like, it's on AMC. Like it's on like this, this film at some point somewhere, it, like there's documents that it did exist. Um, and, and this film is actually even mentioned in a 1965 correspondence, uh, which was written by J. Allen Hynek, Project Blue Book. Um, he, uh, the, the film's producer, Michael Musto, actually sent a letter uh, it, talking about the film to the mayor of Socorro, um, who is uh, named uh, Holm O. Bursarum Jr. There's a lot of juniors. <laughs> There's a lot of juniors. <laughs> yeah. uh, think about it. I'm just going through this. Naming your kid junior back in the day was a lot more common. Yeah. So, um, so Musto, uh, the, the, the producer, um, uh, stated... Uh, Phenomena 7.7 is now completed. It will be viewed by countless millions of people throughout the world. It will open the doors to facts heretofore shrouded in secrecy. It will prepare the entire human race for a better knowledge of the universe <laughs> and possible neighbors who have been observing our Earth for centuries, you know? Yeah. Um, then the U.S. government was like, nah, no, it won't. <laughs> or it's, you know, that's basic promo stuff that it's like, this stuff's going to change the world, which is, you know, I've heard that stuff before. Um, it doesn't. And, and and so Project Blue Book um, actually uh, it, it, in their files actually contain Doctor Doctor Hynek's letter um, on his uh, 1965 Socorro visit, uh, and he wrote in regards to uh, Sergeant um, Sam Chavez that uh, it, Chavez had told him that Zamora didn't want to be in the picture um but it was actually at the mayor's insistence that he had ma the mayor had put pressure on zamora's boss um to to pre to to you know to try and coax uh zamora into doing so into taking part in this in this documentary um and, and heinick said i i can't really believe this that that zamora was uh, against his will was put in this film um, because he got the impression when he talked to Zamora later, it seemed that Zamora was actually kind of pleased about being in the movie, um, you know, mentioning it in conversation. Um, yeah, so would I. Yeah, I would be famous. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, like when Andrew IMDb, was in the IMDb. fucking a wife's f lover or whatever the fuck he was in, he didn't uh, shut up for a year. <laughs> yeah, but hey, I still got those headshots. Right? Here we go again. Yeah, for you. Why wouldn't well, you be excited? You I'm sorry, I was sorry that I'm kind of famous. Yeah, <laughs> All right, well, whatever you say, Zamora. I'm an actor. <laughs> so the film, like, is uh, the film was actually set to be shown for the first time in Socorro, um, but did not really get a wide release as it had been anticipated. The film. The film, to this day, has never been found in any archives or records since then. Like, it was... Fuck, it was, gotta, it was. We got the movie vers version of the Polybius here. <laughs> um, yeah. Apparently, there was, there was a couple of small releases in, in a few of kind of, you know, scheduled lectures of those things. And there was actually... Uh, so it went straight to DVD. Something like that. Um, and, but there was, uh, there was actually a NICAP. People remember NICAP, you know, the... the the progenitor of uh, of MUFON, um, a civilian UFO investig investigation organization, um, that th they had had some members who actually uh, watched it, and and they they actually had kind of negative things to to say about it. Uh, apparently, that Those this bastards. apparently this film to them or the, the people who are watching it, they, they seem to get the idea that this, this film was very much um, very much putting forth a very, a, a commercial kind of message about Socorro. Um, they were saying, you know, it's quoted as saying like, it, it shows a lot of motels and restaurant owners is highly pleased that so many tourists are now coming Listen, to see the landing site. Nobody wants to buy, nobody wants to buy the Lonnie Zamora action figures. All right. <laughs> no need for the ad at that. Yeah. Um, 
And so, and and so there. <laughs> the mayor's like, I want the I want the tourist info stocked with these. <laughs> um, and apparently there there was a bit, um, and, and there's a bit more to it. Um, but just just to kind of give an overall kind of a you know, sum up the whole thing, the whole drama thing is that apparently like there was there was some dispute as to whether NICAP was directly involved in the in the production of the movie. Like there there was something about either Musto or some of the other production uh, had mentioned in the promo and the promotions being like NICAP endorsed this or, you know, endorsed by NICAP, blah, blah, blah. And NICAP being like, no, um, Musto or one of the other producers was involved in in NICAP, he was a member, but we didn't know he was making a movie uh, until like it came out, and now you know we see it, yeah. and it, we're we're not we're not happy about it, but we're not we weren't involved officially in the production of it's, this it, film. You think that's why they were mad? They weren't officially. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It, we don't know. Like to be honest, look for it. Like hashtag fucking look it up. You can't find that shit anywhere. Uh, but I will say, like, in 1966, you know, two years after that, the president of Socorro County's Chamber of Commerce, Paul Writings, actually proposed developing the site of Zamora's uh, encounter uh, to make it more accessible to tourists. I assume putting in more than just, like, a, a gravelly road and a, <laughs> a steep hill to, to get into Make it. a monument in the middle of the desert in Socorro. Right. Hey, it's good for tourism. Yeah, it would be. Uh, the yeah, what's the what's the Roswell town we went to, or the Area Fifty One town we went to? Rachel, oh, Rachel, Rachel, yeah, Rachel, Nevada. <laughs> Two yeah, sixteen trailers 51. and a sixteen trailers and a restaurant. Yeah, Rachel, Nevada. Yeah, dead. but that restaurant was ran by a mercenary. Uh, yeah, by the merc. Hundred percent. That was still one of the strangest things that happened to us. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was very fucking odd. If you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to the Area 51 recap. It's fucking yeah. weird. Uh, yeah, so um, so those are pretty much the the, the big explanations. People try to explain this uh, as to, to to what it is. So either it's a it, it is a um, you know it was an actual thing the the, the lunar lander, um, it being a uh, some type of hoax or it being just a completely fabricated event, uh, you know, at the behest of the, the mayor, uh, maybe trying to get in on a bit of the, you know, Roswell's, uh, Roswell coat, you know, ride in on the, the Roswell yeah. train, get a, get a piece of that, uh, action. Uh, so, um, well, I mean, or it could simply be aliens. Sure. hundred percent. Or it could simply, like we, sure. It's NASA testing the, the lunar lander or something, but maybe it's just a military like experimental craft. We had at this time, we had all those crazy UFO looking experimental crafts that never really flew that well. Mm -hmm. So maybe they, it was at, they flew it from Holloman. They kind of crashed it a bit or <laughs> there's a massive backfire. It dropped out of the sky. That was the explosion. Yeah, they managed to get it back, get it going again. They take off. And then, yeah, they, they come Lonnie, back. They they're like, oh, fuck, get in the crib. Fuck it. <laughs> go, 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 go. And then they come back. They, who they who clean, are they clean the most the expendable people we've got? Oh, there's two Children. short guys. Let's have them. Well, they're probably the only ones that would fit. In some, some of those experimental crafts yeah. are like. <laughs> yeah, the, the specs are you had to be five five feet, 120 pounds just to fit in the fucking thing yeah. or something. And so, yeah. And, then from, <laughs> and from a distance, like, like a small person from a distance, like that's a child. Like. <laughs> Yeah. So it could be exper experimental aircraft, because as far as like e people say, it's like the, the best evidence of like ET craft. But I'm like this doesn't it doesn't check any of the boxes of the ET craft we always talk about, like the UFOs. It doesn't have like the warping of time and space. Or There's no instantaneous the movement. Yeah. No. The and like so like an actual propulsion like burnt on the ground makes it seem like yeah like some type of like a jet or something of that nature yeah and it, because they had it's the only th like, the other thing yeah. around this time was uh what what year was uh rendlesham because that was another thing with the landing prints and oh, like that was right. kind of similar rendlesham Ooh, let me take that in. quick google eyes it's been a long time since we didn't did rendlesham but that that landing was very similar uh, as it did have december 26 1980 80. so late later on but it, it had actually imprints on the ground and seemingly some type of evidence of something that took off in the area. So who knows? But yes, it doesn't seem like a super advanced interdimensional or intergalactic craft. Planetary. Unless, unless, like we, Andrew said it earlier in the episode, 
so they're they have like a mothership let's say it's invisible I mean, we can't see it but they when they want to come to earth they use something that that we use like technology we use to kind of try and blend in a little bit let's say maybe this yeah poking around or they're, they're in, <laughs> investigating the dynamite shacks like what are the what's wrong with these people you can't just keep these out in the fucking they have a, in the elements. And they're no, what these are really <laughs> these are really uh, the the Acme Coyotians, and they had to they have to fight their <laughs> interstellar war against the Roadrunner civilization. So they got to get as much dynamite it's as they can. than we all know. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I don't know. It's uh, Lonnie's definitely he was shook. It seems like he's hundred percent telling he's. Did you straight shooter say this telling it as it is? Shooter. Yeah, and and like we said, this this case is very interesting for the fact that it is like an official one that the um you know, one of those official five percent of cases that went unsolved in Project Blue Book. Um and that the that the department went on to to, to actually speak of and reference and be like that we just we don't we don't know um we did all the tests that we could and we didn't find anything but zamora saw something he saw something and we just we don't know what it is so yeah. you know to actually just admit that and whether that's like you know it's them just being like you know i it's it's hard to to be like they say they don't know maybe they actually don't know and you could also be well the military is covering yeah. it up and it's like well okay yeah it's it's one of the two so i mean you can believe whatever you want um but it is like maybe they really don't know and then again maybe they just do. no idea and they just covered it up um but it is it's yeah. again it has a lot of moving parts to this case and it is kind of fun um it is it is good um unsolved mysteries uh, thing and Zamora Zamora has never Gosh, really Zamora uh, spoke about it in his interview in the Unsolved Mysteries you know talking about kind of like you know he got shit for it like he got shit for this whole thing like people calling him up trying to talk to him whatever and he kind of just like he re- uh, shortly after this he just refused to talk about it he just didn't he, didn't, yeah, he resented yeah, it. he didn't want to talk it about it anymore it, yeah. like he didn't want to say people were showing up at his house they were calling yeah. him they were approaching him in public like he's like I don't yeah want to so um you know Zamora has it's moved on to that but you know he's still ta- it still made an impact on him and still like in the unsolved mysteries and stuff he still talks yeah. about it and he's still kind of like I saw something I don't know what it is and that's just it. And people believe me. People don't believe me. That's that's all I can really do. It is, but the, again, the thing, the 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 crowd that says that maybe he perpetuated a hoax or lied. To what end? Like that's the thing. Like why? What? What do you get out of that? Right. Well, it seems like a really, you know, when people kind of involve the the mayor in, in that in that uh, that theory um it is a very like a harebrained scheme like to me it is something yeah. that's kind of like it's like what yeah, is this fucking mayor quinby or? yeah it's like yeah. what like yeah <laughs> like it just it just doesn't end up the, i i'm a firm believer of there was something something landed that we don't know what it was in yeah. Coro, new mexico this is very um, it's very sc- it's very scooby-doo <laughs> like, it's very scooby-doo we're gonna do this. Yeah. the mayor did it there's the mayor the whole time <laughs> trying to drum up tourism for his new oil drilling yeah. project and or he would have got away with yeah. it if it wasn't for you know, pesky <laughs> military and police yeah. officers yeah. doing your jobs uh pesky it, lani zamora <laughs> it's it's uh you know it's interesting the pro- the propulsion on the craft i chalked that up to lonnie was just Lanny, well, Lanny, Lonnie, he was just chalking that up to trying to explain it the best he could with what he knows. But that doesn't mean that this thing was jet propelled or, you know, combustion engine like we we know today. You know, maybe it was something completely different that that's just the closest thing that he could, you know, make sense of. Perhaps. Cool case. Let us though. know what you think. Hell yeah. And if uh, you haven't heard, we briefly mentioned Rendlesham. That's go way back to case file 61. Woohoo. Yeah. Way back in the day. Fucking Explore Rend- Check it out. Rendlesham Forest. All right. And if you're not supporting the show by now, double Do it. Barrel. Listen. <laughs> listen. At this point, you guys already fucked us because we're not getting hair. We've realized it. So it's listen. too late. Join Patreon so we can get some nice razors. Yeah, so we can we've keep lowered our domes. expectations. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we want to keep these domes nice and chromed. So, so donate to Patreon. Do 
get the glare off? Is there anything like? Yeah, we need we need headwax or whatever. We need, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Got, we, need we need powder to like make get the glare off. You know, keep it you know nice and yeah. smooth. So now it's yeah. We need we need some we need money for bl- for filters to get rid of the glare or some wax. We or need something. sick workout headbands now to keep the sweat from pouring off our heads <laughs> under our eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. LeBron James we're theorizing. style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know where to do. It. Go to support us. AlienTheorist.com. Hit that support tab and exchange for a little bit of support. We're going to offer you back hundreds of hours of bonus content, early early access to all the case files, ad free, all the bonus stuff we've ever done. It's a simple trade. Help your boys out. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. Andrew, start us off with a couple names. All right. So we got our new supporters, Courtney White, uh, Stefan Petkus. Maisie Foster, Woo. Sean Fazzani, yeah. and Kaylee Welch. We got Swayze subbing for the Nookie. Nice. <laughs> Lucamus. That's Mike. Right? Lucamus. Michael Erivit. Liger Rider. Liger Rider. I like it. Hey, and a special Don't shout recommend. out to uh, um, longtime listener of the show uh, who recently was hit by a car in Noah we hope you uh, recover oh, what? and you get better uh, what? how bad? Oh. is he alive? yeah he's, he's alive. alive he's, he's he okay he's fine he's, he's, he's gonna be alright it was like Holy a couple shit. weeks ago now but hey yeah he's, he's fine he's alive buddy he's like Iron Man oh. or Superman he's back he's gonna yeah. come back speedy recovery he's gonna, brother he's gonna call in cosmic tra- channels all drugged up so anyways uh, we hope you get better uh, we hope you get better a lot of the episodes oh, yeah, all the best and why don't you go find a t-shirt whatever t-shirt if you want on our website go grab a t-shirt merch. any t-shirt share a post you know do what you can to help everyone through this theorizing uh, we appreciate it and as we always say at the end of these things keep those eyes peace Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys, enjoy the next video.